Let's see here. Sorry, I had this all organized. Oh, oh, it's the other one. Gameplay. There we go. Oh! So, right here. Desktop. So, um, the two programs we're going to be talking about are AI Track and Open Track here. Uh, open Track, most people are familiar with. It's this sort of the cur current open source standard for head tracking. Uh, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Uh, it's got this cool octopus that's going to represent me once it starts tracking my head here. So we're going to open up an AI track as well. My AI track is accessing this camera I have here right in front of me. I just have it mounted on my little table here. A little sort of it's uh, vertical extension to get it sort of level with my head. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's honestly, the software is pretty remarkable. So it's all apparently using AI face tracking, it's sort of, you know, see finding your face and tracking it, so you can see it there on me. Oh, oh I drag it, it pauses, that's interesting, I didn't notice that. All right. So it gives me a little lipstick, it's sort of tracking all the little landmarks of my face, my eyebrows, nose, mouth, sort of jawline, what I have of one. Um, and basically what you were doing here is uh, built in, well here, let's go into the settings real quick. Built into the settings on AI Tracker, it's just got a quick uh, internal network loop back of all the data coming out of this, and that's picked up then by OpenTrack. So right here, it's just, you know, sending it to your own connection, port 4242. This is all default settings. I didn't mess with this at all. Uh, I guess I did change the model type to medium. I think that's like how accurate it is. So heavy is more accuracy, but slower. Uh, very fast is you know, the least accuracy, but faster. So less less uh, load on your computer, basically. I'm, I just went with medium. Uh, default is fast. Figured my computer can handle it. So oh, that's a big bug. Uh, okay, so apply that. We're all good there. Tracking going. Actually, you know what? I remember now. The documentation says, and and I've I feel like I've done this the other way, and it still works. So, but the documentation does say to start Open Track first. And it here uh, here in the options, I have it set. Or no, I guess yeah, it's right here in the input UDP over network, which is basically what AI Track is sending out. So. And we're, uh, for the output, we're using the FreeTrack 2.0, which is natively supported by War Thunder. Uh, the filter, I haven't messed with these. The Excel filters default, and that's what sort of everybody says to use. Works great. So I haven't messed with it. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff you could sort of delve deeper into. The only thing I really messed with was the, the mapping here. And this basically just controls how it translates your movement to the in-game movement. Um, I'm going to put up a profile here whenever I upload this to YouTube. So these curves that I've built, I've sort of worked a little bit of time with them and got them where I like them. Um, you know, you sort of going to have to feel that out on your own, but I will provide this profile so that everybody can sort of start from here and get an idea of, of uh, what to do. Uh, okay, let's start this, start that tracking. And is waiting for its tracking from AI track. There we go. Notice the octopi is recreating my, my movements. All right, so now we're set. Already got War Thunder running, so let's just bring that in. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Mapping, uh, let me just touch a little bit on the mapping, because this was the most important thing. Because these, by default, are set just like straight lines. And basically, there's two things I want to talk about. The slopes are important. You can, you can add multiple points to sort of curve 
your your path uh, how it translates you can see as as i move my head left and right it's tracking that and this graph is showing you how it's translating so left to right is my movement up and down is translated into how much movement the, the game is going to receive basically you can sort of see those figures here on that screen so i you know the, the 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 big thing that was really important for me is i found that with the you know this tracking is is fairly it's impressively it's uh the the precision of it is impressive but it's not it's not going to be as precise as the ir track track ir i should say um but it's i mean i i could imagine being being very happy with how this works and not even feeling like you want to invest in track ir because this really does work it it works good enough you know uh it's super affordable so um but the one thing with the with that precision that i found is that i sometimes had a little trouble dialing in on my gun sight and being able to really you know close the deal on the kill and so what I did here, you can see here on the graph, the first three degrees, the first three degrees that you move your head uh, in both yaw and pitch, I flattened it out. I made it basically made it a dead zone where it's not, it's not giving any input to the game, so it's locked in on that center point. So this little dead zone really helps. Um, and I'll show you how that works uh, in game, how that sort of translates to in game. Uh, you'll notice also on the pitch, I use the asymmetric mapping. So this is, it's it's sort of a, it just made sense to me because when you're looking down in the game, you can very quickly get to the your your pilot's chest and you can't really see much, uh, and you don't want to look past that. And actually, I think the game really won't even let you look beyond a certain degree. So I set this to a fairly low look down where I just have to look a little bit if I want to look, you know, specifically look at my gauges and, and focus on my cockpit uh, instrumentation. I just do a little look down and I'm, I'm seeing it. And then, but the look up, which is super important when you're, when you're turn fighting, you're track, you're trying to track your opponent. Uh, that is a more gradual, more precise slope. And then I basically cut it off at about a, you know, cause I didn't want to make it unrealistic where you would, you, I mean, for me, the realism is a little more important than like the, you know, maybe competitive or the, the advantage. So I set it where it was more of a, like a realistic, like a pilot would really drag his head back and stuff. And then roll, I don't know, I'm still, I'm unsure about roll. Roll, I like, I feel like I definitely roll when I'm flying and I'm trying to adjust my, my visual for the horizon, but this is I'm, I'm, I'm sort of messed with. And then the translation are, it actually works to just have the flat movement because it's just a pretty pretty linear and, and there's not a lot of uh, cockpit movement in War Thunder in the first place. All right, so let's get started and demo this here. So we've got the tracking. I did set a little keyboard command to center it. So I'm going to do that right now, but we'll do that in game as well. It's just a, something you'll do periodically. All right. So I'm actually on my, my wife's account. I have this all set up on her rig. So we're going to fly some French planes. I am going to, I'm hoping we can just find a real quick, uh, oh wait, hold on. Let me switch to the, the demo. There we go. All right, now we've got our demo shut up. There we go. Perfect. Battles, air sim. The room list. Oh, we've got one good game. 11 players. That's all I need. I just want to fly, guys. I just want to fly for my demo. Okay. Looks like everything's good. Thanks for uh, checking out the stream, guys. I hope you get a good kick out of this. I'm gonna provide uh, links to all the software, uh, the two, you know, the uh, AI tracker and OpenTrack. 
and I will also provide this uh, profile that I'm using as you know a base to get started if you want to mess with this software. So, just do it. Let me know if there's any audio weirdness. Always have audio weirdness. Literally all every time. Uh, so looks like that's showing everything good. So, you know, I'm on my Hotas. This is a really pretty basic setup. I've got my table, I've got the keyboard and mouse for tail gunning, chatting, stuff like that. Everything set up on the Hotas. Um, I do have an extra light. Just it's more for the video than for the tracker. The the tracker I use just the ring light that's built into this camera. Uh, this is a Razer Kyo. It works great. I set it even to the lowest brightness, and I have all the lights off in the room. You know, uh, while I sleep it, and it works great. So you don't need you don't need that much light for this AI tracker to work. Uh, it works pretty fantastic. I'm gonna take the 501. Need to spade this little guy. Air superiority. We're losing. Alright. So. I do have it set. I have this. I might. I might end up disabling that for the demo. I don't know. It's. It's kind of interesting. So, I have it set where if you lean forward, it zooms. And and I'm not sure if I need to maybe find. I know, it, it feels pretty smooth. Like you can, just zoom a little bit. Zoom a lot of bit. The enemy has captured a zone. Um. I'm gonna recenter this here. I feel like it's a little off here. Attention to the map! Recenter. Boom. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna leave the zoom on for now. It's a little weird. I was still getting used to it last time I demoed it. All right, let's turn this beach up. Unfortunately, I have to sort of look over there to the right if we got any chat, but I'll hear it too. So. Uh, let's get into some tunes. Uh, Alexa, shuffle my chill playlist. Shuffling your playlist, chill on Amazon Music. Okay. So you'll notice when I when I look, it sort of locks in. That's that dead zone that I made. It locks into that gun sight. And you'll see the translation's pretty free flowing, so you can I'm moving left and right and it's sort of you know, so you'll, you'll you'll find that spot that you need to be comfortable in to, to gun sight. When I zoom, when I lean forward, it does the zoom. It's I don't know, it feels kinda cool. That's work. Um, I've had a little jankiness. Like you sort of have to lean back. A lot of fighters. Okay, I'm on the way. Let's do it, guys. Be really bad if I messed up this takeoff. No flaps. some reason I've, I've discovered that I touch my face a lot because I'll be like looking for a fighter and I do this and it still it still is like it's okay it's still figuring it out but I've had some weirdness I've reached up to my face and it messes up the views so whoa okay we got to go over there whoa So 
Alright, I'm going to go to left scene. Now you'll notice it's like, it, it does, it stops at that snap point. And I guess if you didn't have the dead zone, it would be smoother, but I think it's worth it to be able to lock into that gun sight. And uh, so, one thing that's interesting also, I just I just uh, remembered I wanted to, four groups of fighters. What am I supposed to do about it, Avery? Oh, I'm getting a little, whoa. I guess streaming in. A little bit of frame rate. Oh my god, it's Weehorn88! He's gonna hunt me down! Oh no, he's friendly. Oh, he's flying on my team now. I killed that guy a couple times uh, earlier today. Alright, those are all friendly zones. Um, so, uh, I look over to the left and then I lean in. And it zooms in. I mean, that... It's pretty freaking cool. Zoom in. It probably makes me look like a, a doofus, but... I mean, does that matter? Woo, this thing rolls 